Assalamu alaikum. We are going to talk about hybridization of orbitals and that uh, different elements in the periodic table, they are able to form bonds with other atoms or different elements and their bonding situations are also different. So some of these elements, they form single bonds, some of them form double bonds, some form single bonds, some form two bonds, three bonds, four bonds and so on. So why all of them have different bonding situation? And of course that can be explained by some of the theories that we are discussing right now. But even those theories are unable to completely explain it. And that is why uh, a new concept was introduced, a hypothetical concept called hybridization was introduced, which could then explain the different bonding situation in different types of molecules. Right, so today we are going to talk about hybridization or we can also call it hybridization of orbitals. So what does it mean? Hybridization is the mixing of two different things. If you look at it in a general way, it is the mixing of two different types of things that gives rise to a new thing, a new species. Here we are going to talk about hybridization of orbitals. Remember, it's a hypothetical phenomena that has been introduced to explain the different bonding situations in different types of elements. So let me first tell you how an element would react or how many bonds or what type of bonds it will form if we don't consider the concept of hybridization. So the first example is that of Beryllium. If you start from the second group, beryllium, beryllium's atomic number is 4. And if you look at its electronic configuration, that is 1s2 and 2s2. So looking at its electronic configuration, you would think that beryllium would not form any bonds because all of its electrons are paired up, 2 in the 1s orbital and 2 in the 2s orbital. So all the electrons are paired up and you would think that it will not react. But actually, beryllium belongs to the second group. And you already know that alkaline earth metals that belong to the second group, they form two bonds each. So beryllium can form two bonds. It's a divalent molecule, a divalent element, which can form molecules having uh, two bonds connected to the beryllium atom. Now, Looking at the electronic configuration, you would think it's not possible. But in reality, experimentally, it can form two bonds. It's a divalent atom, and you will see how it can form two bonds. The next is boron. Boron belongs to the third group, right? Its atomic number is five. And if you look at its electronic configuration, two is two, two, three, one. It has five electrons, and now it's valent, valent electron, it belongs to the p orbital, right? Its first two orbitals, that is the 1s orbital and the 2s orbitals, are completely filled. Looking at its electronic configuration, because these four electrons are paired up, only one electron is unpaired, you would think boron forms one bond. It's a monovalent atom. But actually, it belongs to the third group, and you know that elements in the third group, they form three bonds. They are trivalent in nature, boron, aluminium, and others, right? So how these are trivalent? The next one is carbon. Carbon belongs to the fourth group. Its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. Again, if you look at the electronic configuration of carbon, you can see that the electrons in 1s and the 2s orbitals, they are paired up, while the two electrons in the 2p orbital, they are not paired up. You know that the p orbital has three suborbitals, px, py, and pz, and you already know that first you have to fill these electrons separately, and then you can pair them up. 
So these two electrons, they are present in separate P sub orbitals in an unpaired form. So looking at the electronic configuration of carbon, you would think that carbon is a divalent element or divalent atom because it has two unpaired electrons and it can use these two unpaired electrons in forming two bonds. We discussed this in the previous session when we were talking about valence bond theory that only the valence electrons and among the valence electrons only those which are unpaired are involved in bonding. So looking at the electronic configuration of these three elements, this element boron, uh, sorry beryllium does not have any unpaired electron. It means it would not form any bond. Boron has only one unpaired electron. That means it should form only one bond. And carbon has two unpaired electrons. That means that carbon should form only two bonds. But in reality, it is not so. It is different. The bonding situation in all these three are different. These are not the only three elements in which you can have hybridization of orbitals. You can have hybridization in other elements as well. But these are just uh, the three examples. Now, beryllium, as I told you, is divalent. It forms two bonds. Boron is trivalent. It forms three bonds. And carbon is tetravalent. It forms four bonds. How will you explain the di, tri, or tetravalency of these elements? That we will discuss in a couple of minutes. Right? So this all can be explained through orbital hybridization, and let's see how it works. Coming back to carbon, carbon has six electrons, two in the 1s orbital, two in the 2s orbital, and two in the 2p orbitals. The two electrons in the 2p orbital, they are in unpaired form, like this. Now, as I told you earlier that looking at the electronic configuration of carbon, you would think it's diamond, but it is tetravalent. So let's see how it is tetravalent. So if you try to explain it on an energy scale diagram, and you arrange these orbitals on an energy scale diagram, the lowest energy orbital of all these, of uh, all of these is the 1s orbital that has two electrons. The one having higher energy than one is the 2s orbital. Again, it has two electrons. And then finally, we have the three p orbitals. The two p orbitals, x, y, and z. Right? Remember, you can place these two electrons in any of these three p orbitals. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that they should be in unpaired form. You cannot pair them up in one orbital. You can place them separately in two different orbitals, but you cannot pair them up in one orbital. Because if empty orbitals are available, uh, you should take those electrons to the empty orbitals rather than um, pairing them up in a single orbital. This is the electronic configuration of carbon on an energy scale diagram. Now when carbon is going to form a bond, of course, you have to provide it some energy. And when you provide it energy, this carbon goes into the excited state. Now, this is the ground state electronic configuration of carbon. But when you provide it energy, it goes to the excited state. And, and you know that in an excited state, an electron is excited. So an electron from a lower energy orbital is excited to a higher energy orbital. And so, one electron from the 2s orbital will jump into the 2p orbital. And it will jump into an orbital of the 2p orbital that is empty. Right? It cannot go into any of these two orbitals. It will go into the one that is empty. So, the excited state configuration of carbon would look like 2s. We are not concerned with 1s because 1s is not involved in bonding, right? So the 2s now has one electron and one of the electrons from the 2s 
has jumped into the 2p orbit. This is x, y, z. And now you see that carbon now has four unpaired electrons. And so you can say now that it can form four bonds because it has four unpaired electrons and it can use all of these unpaired electrons for forming bonds with other elements. And because there are four unpaired electrons, it can form four bonds. But again, there is a problem. The problem is that this unpaired electron belongs to the 2s orbital. And these three belong to the 2p orbital. All these orbitals are of the same energy. The 2p orbitals are of the same energy. But the problem lies here. This 2s orbital has a lower energy. So anything that comes from our side will have to form bonds with electrons in the 2p orbital and also electrons in the 2s orbitals. And because they have different energies, the bond energies would be different. The strength of the bond would be different. The overlap would be different. This s orbital is spherical in shape. The p orbital is dumbbell in shape. They have different shapes. They have different energies. So the bonding would not be equal for all the orbitals. So within the same element, within the same atom, when it is going to form different bonds, the energies of those bonds would be different. And that is not going to work. This carbon will form four bonds, but three of them will have one sort of energy, and the other, the fourth one, will have a different energy. Now, to explain this, the concept of orbital hybridization was introduced. And that is the, uh, a hypothetical concept of hybridization that can explain the tetravalency of carbon. And what happens in hybridization, as I told you earlier, is that orbitals mix together. Orbitals are basically mix or they or lay orbitals but they in Goham hybrid orbitals get they yeah, hybridized orbitals can. Okay? Or go hybridized orbitals may go for bonding may involve. So, usse fir carbon ki ya kisi bhi element ki bonding situation kya hogi? Ye fir detail mein discuss karenge. Hybridization ko explain karenge. The different bonding situations in carbon uh, because of hybridization wo hum detail mein uh, discuss karenge. Thank you so much. See you next time.